Hey everybody, Adam with Hype is here Collectibles, and today, as you can see, we are doing a junk wax rip. This is a break of 1987 tops. Um, I actually found these at an antique store. Um, antique store that I go to here in Northeast Florida quite a bit has quite a few wax cards, so junk waxes I would call them. Um, anything from the early 80s on up to around, let's say, 93. So with these, I have a fascination with Topps cards. Topps, in general, kind of leads the way. So what I decided to do is do a break. I am fairly certain that these cards have not been searched. As you can see, this is the 1987 design. Now, obviously, I'm in my mid-30s. So I started collecting around, let's say around 80, 88, 89. So this particular card, I did have some of these. As you can see, this particular model, if you've never seen these, if you're a little younger, came with 17 cards um, and of course nowadays you don't quite get that many unless you get a jumbo pack it did come with the gum so you will see some of these um, do have the gum stains on them I am curious about some of these cards because again this was not a sealed box so I'll be looking to see if some of these might have again we hope they weren't searched I don't think they were the box looked pretty old in fact um, let me see if I can get you the box here so you can see it this is the way the box looked when I got it. So the box itself had been beat up pretty good. Um, it was sit in, it was sitting in a um, a jewel case type where it was locked away. So um, yeah, you can see this box has had its better days. So um, it did come with all the packs, I believe. I haven't counted them, but you can see back in the day in '87, um, Dave Getty was on the front, and Dave Getty might be the most worthless card in this set now. So. Um, these went for 40 cents a pack, as you can kind of see here. Let me see if I can, again, this box is just falling apart. You can see it went for 40 cents a pack. Um, so yeah, we'll just toss that to the side there. Um, I did pick this cello pack up here. Um, cello pack, I should say. The cellophane packs of 1986 tops. Now, 86 is actually where the Barry Bonds rookie card originally is from. 87 is actually the first main um, Barry Bonds card release. Topps traded in 86, had Barry Bonds, had Jose Canseco. This is not Topps traded. You can see this was 59 cents. Um, so I figured we'd pop this one open first. This is 28 cards. So just kind of a, an opener. Kind of the opening act. You know, everybody had to have an opening act. Hell, even Van Halen had an opening act. So let's go ahead and rip this open and see if we can find anything. Um, first thing I'm curious about is where the gum is in this. And there it is right there. Not eating that. Gonna hand that off to my system, my lovely wife. All right. Tom Seaver was the first card I saw in this. Tom Seaver Hall of Famer. Um, immediately when I saw this pack, it stood out to me. So, very cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. Steve Buscell, Bo Diaz. Of course, they got to be upside down. Brent Gaff. Billy Martin, legendary manager of the Yankees. Um, the infamous card everybody knows of Billy Martin. Where he's actually given the finger in the photo. I believe that was the late 60s tops. Billy Martin is a Yankees legend. Hall of Famer. Terry Francona, current manager of the Indians, I believe. McNamara. Chuck Porter. Nice Brett Saberhagen card. Had a nice career. Larry Sheets. Literally every card has to be turned outside down. Why do you do this, tops? Look, I mean, literally every other card. I'm, I'm not going to keep doing this. Bill Swift. Um, here's their silly little contest where you could win something cool. Um, Keith Moreland. Uh, Dave Parker. Brett Butler. Jim Gott. Jerry Naren. Joaquin Andujar. I wonder if that is um, Miguel Andujar's father. I did look into that. Billy Hatcher looking very relaxed. Zane Smith. I hated his face. Carney Lansford had a pretty good career. Larry McDonald. Jim Wynn. Lloyd Mosby. And we're back to Tom Seaver. So nothing really all that great out of that pack. So it was interesting um, to see what was in there. Let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and start breaking these um sorry my cat's down here so you may hear me rustling with him trying my best to kind of keep this under control but of course when you have an animal now he's doing this so that's my cat anyhow all right 
so let's go ahead and get back now he's just over there in frame so now he's in my box where I put my cards so um, let's go ahead and try to get back on track again this is tops 87 see what we can do here they don't look like they've been opened but don't know I don't think so there's the gum again when you open up these old packs you can see the gum here um, comes off pretty good actually you can still see a little bit of the gum stain cards especially old wax cards you'll notice if they've been kept in a um, in an area that had a lot of moisture you'll notice the stain kind of leaks through I'm not seeing that here so um, let's see what we got here let's see if we can get these lined up here and Kirk Gibson had a great career but he remembers Kirk Gibson with his walk-off home run I always love the wood border around these cards obviously most recently tops has recreated a lot of these cards here so very cool again there's our contest um, Paul Ossenmacher, what a name. Claude Washington, Donnie Moore, Tim Lawler, Jim Wolford, and there we are. So we're right back where we started. All right. We are looking for the Barry Bonds 87 Tops card. Also, there is an awesome Mark McGuire in this, Jose Canseco, Barry Larkin's rookie cards in here. Um, let me just... Okay. Camera pause there for a second. Apologize for that. All right. There's another Don Mattingly. Again, it's kind of ironic that Harold Baines is in this, and yet Don Mattingly is also as well. Um, if Harold Baines is a Hall of Famer, then Don Mattingly should be as well. Mitch Webster called him Wild Thing, if I'm not mistaken. That was Mitch Webster. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's quite possible. He was a hitter. What I'm thinking of was a pitcher. Then again, they called Charlie Sheen Wild Thing in Major League, one of my favorite movies. Never seen Major League. It reminds me a lot of the Marlins. All right, folks, looking for that Barry Bonds. Again, so far, no Barry Bonds. We have pulled the Mark McGuire, and we have pulled the Jose Canseco. Alejandro Pena always reminded me of Richard Pryor. The movie moving. Bip Roger Roberts, speedster, was a leadoff runner, hitter. I say runner because all he had to do was bunt, get on base. You had guys like that, especially in the earlier days. Mike Sosha was a manager for years. There's a Wade Boggs, there's a Hall of Famer. Nice card, Wade Boggs. Getting very well centered. There we go. Back in the day, I can remember. Again, I say back in the day, so I am 36. I remember getting somebody on base was the goal. Bunt them. Ricky Henderson. Definition of a speedster. Henderson's in this set. I do believe. Mark Clear. Does he make himself clear? Yeah. Tony Pena was also a manager. And Overfell, Mike Fitzgerald, Charlie Lee Brandt. You'll have to tell me what you want me to break, folks, because I am going back and breaking a lot of wax boxes. Uh, saw a leaf, a 93 leaf, Steve Balboni. Saw a 93 leaf set, passed it up because there's really no rookies in there. If I'm not mistaken, Series 1. I think Series 2 does have some. If I'm not mistaken. Still going back and learning about some of the sets and things that I missed while I was gone from the game. Again, it was Gypsy Queen, last year's Gypsy Queen set, that brought me back in. So, Oh, the Zane Smith card got ruined. That's such a shame. You hate to see it happen. Alright, Kevin Mitchell was a favorite of my cousins growing up. He always wanted to be Kevin Mitchell. Um, an RBI baseball. I can't remember what Kevin Mitchell's name was in RBI baseball, but it wasn't Kevin Mitchell, if I'm not mistaken. There's our Zane, Myth, Zane Smith card. Alright, Terry Pendleton had a great career. 
pretty decent career with the uh, Braves, I should say. It wasn't blow you away stats, but definitely hit when he was with the Braves. That mid '90s Braves team who just always came so close. Should have won more World Series than they ever did. All right, I thought we had 12. I think I was wrong. I think I could have been more wrong. Again, we are breaking a whole box, looking for that illustrious Barry Bonds rookie card. Jerry Francona again, a Roscoe. Next comes the, let's see here, Pat Perry. Actually, some of these are a little different. Joe Sambito. About 700 cards in this set, if I'm not mistaken, including Ted Power. Ted Power sounds like... See, I was in the professional wrestling business for quite a while. Ray Knight, infamous manager. The Reds, if I'm not mistaken. I was in the wrestling business for quite a while. Ted Knight, or Ted Power sounds like the name I would give somebody who is only gonna, who just started. Oh, you're gonna be Ted Power. Ted Power. Oh. Yeah. This gum. I'm not eating the gum. I'm just not gonna do it. Don't wanna torture myself. Some people do. Um, you should take a look at um, John Jabs' video where he ate 40 pieces of the gum. Um, very interesting. There's a Joe Carter. Joe Carter was known for his time, really, with the uh, Blue Jays. Yeah, but John ate 40 pieces of gum. Ron Washington, the manager of the Texas Rangers at one point, who stepped down. Clint Hurdle, current manager of the Pirates. Also was a manager of the Rockies, if I'm not mistaken. I subscribe to, is this the second, wait, John, wait, hold on, I just noticed something here, wait, did I, I feel like I saw the same cards over again, wait, which one, yeah, there they are, what the hell, why are there the, hmm, okay, hmm, it's interesting. So either Tops was doing poor as far as uh, quality control goes, or else that pack might have been looked at before. I don't think so. These packs don't feel like they've been pack searched. I mean, I don't feel that. But again, though, we're pulling good cards. We've already pulled two of the cards I've been looking for. We have not pulled a Barry Bonds yet. Um, again, when I say searched, Junk wax cards, as you call them, any cards from the late 80s into the 90s, were easy to search. I mean, if you wanted to search these cards, all you had to do is have a little candle wax. Um, Tim Warlock, third base coach of the Marlins. And really just a steady hand. And you could go through these cards and honestly go through and find whatever cards you want. Put them back together. Um, it happened quite a bit. Eric Plunk, again, I don't know why I didn't care for him too much growing up. Joe, everybody has a price. But yeah, these cards were easily searched. Um, I guess to find the Bonds rookie card, you could, but I don't really I don't think that's what happened here. I don't think. It is interesting, though, that some of the same cards are in here twice. And again, though, in the 80s, it wasn't the same as it is today as far as quality control goes, so... This is George Brett Hall of Famer. George Brett, known for the pine tar incident. Mickey Brantley, Jose Guzman, Harold Baines Hall of Famer. Again, we should be coming up to a Don Mattingly probably in here. Solomon, Hal McRae, Ed Hearn, Phil Bradley, Lenny Dykstra. Had a great career. Daryl Strawberry, so no. So again, there's really no rhyme or reason on that. There wasn't a Mattingly, which again, there was a pack structure with these, a lot of these cards, because of the fact that they, the way they were done, um, kind of call which cards were coming next, which is interesting. I always liked the fact as a kid, this reminded me to not do drugs, which so if you've seen some of the sets in the early 90s, you really wanted to do drugs. They um, were ugly. They looked like somebody was doing drugs when they made them. 90 Don Russ is hideous. Um, just awful. In fact, Jab's family 
is doing a Eric's doing a rank of the top 10 worst sets so um, I definitely think you should check that out some of the ones he's done so far are definitely bad there's Bruce Bochy there were some bad sets back in the day there were some really bad sets in fact some of the sets out there um, are literally worthless and that's a shame and that comes down to the fact there's an Oral Horschizer Rookie was an 85. That comes down to the fact that they overproduced them. I mean, we're sitting here breaking new 87 tops unopened, from what I think. And here it is 30 years later, you know, over 30 years. So, I mean, that tells me that, and there's probably millions of boxes still out there unopened. That tells me that they really just produced way too many of them. They jumped the shark in the late 80s, early 90s more so. Um, you know. And you can see there is a, we're pulling a lot of the same cards. I've seen that Gerald Strawberry now 10 times, that Hal McRae quite a few times. And there's 700 cards in a series, so I mean, you tell me. There's another hanky. Scrum. I feel like I'm seeing them over and over and over. Maybe it's just because we've opened up quite a few packs. There's a Reggie Jackson card. That is a nice one. Reggie didn't have too many cards left. In fact, I think 88 score was his last card. This is 87. So, Reggie Jackson, that is a nice card. We're going to set that up there um, real quickly. If we're not going long, let's go ahead and make it longer. Um, there's his stats. He's a designated hitter at this point because he was up there. But um, I'd love to have Reggie's um, rookie card. In fact, I think I had his, as a kid, I think I had his second year card. I think that's as close as I had. While I'm opening up these here, I'll tell you a story real quick since we're going through that phase of the video now. Um, when I was young, as a collector, um, I say um a lot and I apologize for that. But as a collector, I would have my grandmother take me to a flea market. And I always knew a guy there who always had good cards. Always had great cards. There's a turn back the clock. Anyways, one day I go up there and usually I'd buy, you know, 10, 20 cent cards, whatever, some packs maybe. This guy, for some reason, decides I'd looked at it too long. He saw me do it. I was a kid. I was probably nine, eight, nine years old. And I was looking at a Joe Morgan rookie card. There's a Tony Gwynn, probably one of the best hitters of all time. Rest in peace. Anyways, the Joe Morgan rookie card was in a screw case. Looked at it, and I remember, like I said, I had an older cousin named Brian, who at the time was a big-time collector, but he spent a lot of money. Spent a lot of money on his cards. He always had the Ricky Henderson rookie card. He had everything, so I wanted to be like him. This card, he wanted $80 for at the time, which now you can pick it up for $10, 20 depending on where you go. Anyhow... My grandmother felt bad for me because I kept looking at this card. I wanted that card. She bought me the Joe Morgan rookie card. I was ecstatic. Now, I showed everybody I could that card because, hey, I pulled a late latter 60s card there, you know. It was nice. Nobody else had those cards unless you were older, you know, or had money. So, I showed everybody. And one day I made the mistake of bringing it to school. I brought it to my elementary school, I believe it was. And not thinking, showed everybody I could because I was proud of it. And put it in my cubby, Earl Weaver, who... YouTube Earl Weaver rants. If you like to have fun, listen to those. Anyhow, took that card. Somebody stole it. I was heartbroken. I couldn't believe somebody stole my card. And that's the day I realized that people, in general, can be very, very evil. You don't think about like, stuff like that as a kid. You just think about the hobby. And loving cards, you know. There's a Roger Clemens. Now that's that's probably the, in my opinion, third best card we pulled. Roger Clemens, again, the guy I collected. I do hope he gets in the Hall of Fame one day. It will be tight due to the PED accusations. Um, hope he gets in there. I like that Roger Clemens. That is a card we have not pulled yet. Still gives me hope. All right, we are down to eight more packs. I'm about ready to wrap this up. Appreciate anybody who has watched, who has subscribed. Appreciate anybody who helps share. 
It's interesting. Uh, it does have a little wax on it. For a second there, I thought I saw something. Bird Bly 11 Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know, getting back into card collecting and finding these cards like this and going back and pulling cards and, you know, um, enjoying the hobby is something. There's Now, there's a nice card. I love this card just because it's an action. Ricky Henderson, um, all-time base stealer. This will never be broken. If you take a look at his stolen bases, yeah, the man had 130 stolen bases in his fourth year. That will never be broken. That is a nice card. I like that a lot. Keith Hernandez, Tom Bernanski, Mike Marshall, and Raphael Belliard. Starting to get a little nervous. We're not going to pull that Bonds. We got a few more packs left. George Brett on the back that has a little wax damage. You know, if you ever buy early Don Russ, um, you'll notice that they had the gum in the cards at the time. Uh, and it just is a disaster. And thank God Topps went away from it. In fact, some of Topps' later cards, they had gum in them, but they finally figured out to put it in a package. Because gum just literally ruins the cards. Topps, um, if I am not mistaken, I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh... Tops actually started out as a uh, gum company. And cards as a kid were just something that, you know, you were nice enough to get. So, thank God they decided to go into the full-time baseball card business. Andres Galarraga, who played in Jacksonville, where I, basically where I live at. So Wally Joyner Cup card. Wally Joyner had a great career. Steve Sachs, who is now a broadcaster, had a decent career. Tim Raines, otherwise known as Rock Raines. Ozzie Guillen, who was a manager who got ran out of town, not only from the White Sox, but the Marlins. I believe the Marlins traded for him, which is weird. You don't see a lot of managers get traded for. Really expected him to do something, but... Here's the all-time Julio Franco, who Julio played Julio played for uh, many, many years. In fact, um, I think he went out of the States for a little while to play. Otherwise, he would have had more hits than he did. Let's see here. So we've got four packs after this left. Turn that gum away. Tom Browning, who always looked like he was just a dirty individual. You know, as a kid, you shape your mind and you find that you, you just get opinions about guys who, you know, you look at them and you just immediately say, I don't like the look of that fella. Bobby Valentine, who was the manager of the Mets, known for the infamous mustache, the disguise, going back into the locker room after he'd been thrown out of the game and then getting suspended before it. Now that, that is a judgment look. Look at Rick Mailer. Well, he is judging you. Ron Robinson, again, another ghoul. Look at the, I mean, good lord. The Reds were just, like at one point I literally thought there was enough red-headed guys on the Reds. Paul Molitor had a good career. I thought they were called the Reds because you had to have red hair to play for them. I was not a very bright kid at some point. Um, I literally thought that. So, four packs left as we wrap up this break. Again, so far, no Barry Bonds. A little pull, Barry. It's okay. We did pull some nice cards. We had a had a good break. Enjoyed a laugh or two. It was a card of Scrimpsky. Turn back the clock. The Scrimpsky. Tony Bernazer. Hmm. Andy McGaffigan. Bruce Hurst. Have a turn back the clock. Dave Concepcion. Joe Hesketh. Bruce Bochy, we've talked about Bochy here a few times. He's the current manager, I believe, of the Giants. I do subscribe to Ruben Sierra. I had a great career. I do subscribe to uh, MLB Extra Innings. So I like to watch all kinds of different teams, especially when your team's terrible, you know. When your team is bad, you'll watch good baseball any chance you get because you're tired of watching your team lose. And again, if I haven't reminded y'all, I'm a Marlins fan, and the Marlins are not a good team whatsoever. 
not good at all. Hopefully that'll change one year. Another Jamie Moyer rookie card, I believe that's his rookie. Okay, Thorn, that's a nice card. I like that one. 86 Record Breakers, Roger Clements. That's a nice card. The Rocket. I love that. That's good. That's going to go on my PC, my personal collection. Bob Tewksbury. Hmm. Chetty Higuera. Mariano Duncan. Remember hearing his name as a kid. Mike Felder. Jack Clark. John Cangelosi. And Eddie Milner. I believe John Cangelosi was a decent leadoff hitter, if I'm not mistaken. Second to last pack, just for Juju. I'm going to open this one because this one looks like it's been ran through a blender. Phil Garner, Scrap Iron. He was the manager of the Brew Crew for many years. Again, the judgmental Rick Mahler. He really does look... He's, he's looking at you like you're just a piece of... Mm -hmm, that's what he's looking at. George Bamberger. Bam! What a weird, what a weird look. Like, like, the, the pictures, I like action pictures because it's showing them, like, even that picture is great. It's showing pitch, but some of these guys are just like, look, what were they telling this guy to do? Hey, Rick, look confused in the distance, like you're seeing a family member who might or might not be ill. Like, what, what is he doing? Dale Murphy had a great career. Some folks think he, yeah, you can see, um, some of these cards have had, some damage to the corners because again somebody decided to play catch with the packs watch me pull out a damaged bond out of one of these packs looking like we are not going to pull the bonds we got one more pack oops as i knock down the camera here we go last pack yeah i think gums had a better day Charlie Huff, again, Marlins' first pitcher. There we go. And Brent Smith, Sammy Stewart, Alfredo Griffin, he faked me out earlier. Mm, why are they sticking together? Why are they sticking together? Sammy Khalifa, that must have some wax damage. Why, literally, they are stuck together. So this is an option. We're not going to be able to pull these apart. This is a good... Example of the wax bleeding through, or the gum bleeding through. Jose Rio, Ron Reynolds, who's too cool for the room because he's got to put an extra in. Last name there, first name, Glenn Davis. And Mike Young, Rob Deere, and Doug DeCensus. So, we did not pull the Barry Bonds. We did, however, pull some pretty nice cards. Let's kind of go back and take a look at the nicer cards we did pull. We pulled this Roger Clemens, 86 Record Breakers, Ricky Henderson, which I love this card. I just think it looks great before he became an athletics, played for the athletics, I should say. Another nice Roger Clemens card, Reggie Jackson, really like the look of that card. There's our Jose Canseco Cup card, manager card for Pete Rose, Don Mattingly, Donnie Baseball. There's the best card yet, the Mark McGuire, 87, which is not his rookie, still a nice card. The Pete Rose player card and a Tom Seaver. So that is it, folks. I do want to thank you very much for sticking to the end. Please share, please subscribe, please let know you know let your friends know that I will be doing breaks. If you have a suggestion, if it's something you want to see, um, again, I have all kinds of stuff here. I've, again, I'm a toy collector. If you like what you see, please let somebody know and subscribe. And make sure you like us on Facebook, Hypus Here Collectibles. Um, I am on Twitter as well. Look me up. I will see you folks later.